Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the HJC Arthur 91 helmet. This is the new for 2023 HJC Arthur 91 flip front helmet. It takes over from the very popular Arthur 90S and in virtually every way I'd say this is a significant improvement over the previous helmet. Normally when I come to review a lid I've done a few hundred miles in it to get a good idea of what it's like out on the road. But for this helmet the review period coincided with a really intense period of riding. So I've done over 2000 miles in this one which means I've got a more in-depth understanding of this helmet than I'd normally have. First though, let's run through the key details before I get into too much about how I found it out on the road. The shell for the main portion of the helmet is made from HJC's latest composite of fibres which they call PIM EVO or Premium Integrated Matrix EVO. That composite includes aramid, carbon and glass fibres as well as linen among other materials to try and optimise shock protection. As with the vast majority of flip front helmets, the chin bar portion of it is made from plastic. This size medium R491 weighs in on our scales at 1752 grams. The previous R490S was one of the lighter flip front helmets around, but this 91 loses that badge. As I'd say, it's now about average for a flip and possibly even a little bit above average in terms of weight. But I never found weight to be a problem when I was wearing this helmet and I had some very long days in the saddle where it really would have exposed a problem with a heavy helmet. I also had the intercom fitted, which makes it a bit heavier still, but even then I didn't find weight to be an issue. The chin bar operating mechanism for this lid is an upgrade over the old helmet. As the chin bar is lifted, it pivots back and down, which makes for a more compact helmet when you're wearing it in the open position. To lift it, you push the button away at the tip of the chin bar and then lift. In the first part of its travel, this integrated chin curtain just here comes out of its locked position and it pivots forward very slightly. This means the chin bar can sit further back when it's in the uppermost position without stretching that chin curtain or without the chin curtain trying to stop the travel. As it reaches the top of its travel, you can see the pivot point just here will come back and down for that compact profile when it's raised. There's a locking switch to hold the chin bar in the raised position as well. Push this red switch up to lock it and then you slide the grey tab back so that locks it in place and then this grey tab here, push it back and it releases it again. As with all flip-up helmets that meet the new 2206 safety approval, this has been tested as both an open face and a full face, so you can legally wear it in either configuration. The closure for this lid is one of the quietest of all the flip front helmets I've tried, which for me is both a good thing and a bad thing. It gives a good quality feel rather than the loud clank you get with some flips, but it does make it harder to tell sometimes if the chin bar is properly secured. I found the best way to close it was to lower it just normally and then secure it in place by gripping the chin bar and pulling it into the locking mechanism so then I knew it was done. I quickly got used to doing it that way and was very happy with the chin bar operation in the end. I didn't routinely ride with the chin bar up as that meant I had to rely on just the sun visor for eye protection but on the occasions that I did that I was very happy with the Alpha 91. I found it probably better balanced than most flip fronts about. HJC have also put retracting covers on the area where the chin bar mechanism secures into the main shell, just here, which they say is to make the helmet quieter than others if these sections were open when you're riding with the chin bar up. Couldn't tell you how much difference that makes in terms of noise, but it shows the level of detail that HJC have gone into with this helmet. Okay, let's move on to venting then, which I think is quite possibly the most impressive aspect of all with this helmet. There's a chin vent with two levels of opening and that draws air through the chin bar and into the eye port. This, in my opinion, is excellent, and on long days on the bike, I found it very refreshing to get that airflow inside the lid. There's also a big sliding vent up top as well, which allows air in through two holes that come down into the interior of the helmet. Channels in the EPS impact liner then allow that air to circulate and exit through a switchable exhaust vent just behind it. I found the top vent as well to be excellent, and I could really feel air whooshing into the lid and circulating particularly around my temples. There are also two sliding vents just above the visor here, although I noticed very little cooling effect from those. Before I wore the helmet, the best ventilation I'd ever experienced was on Schubert's C5. Now this helmet is a rival for that in terms of ventilation, and if it's not better than a C5, then it's a very close run thing between the two helmets. Overall, the Arthur 91 on ventilation is superb. 
Okay, let's move on to the visor then. It lifts and lowers on a tab to the left-hand side and there are 11 steps between fully raised and fully lowered. I never had any difficulty opening it by just a small amount to allow in a little bit of airflow. I did need to use a little bit more force than I'd like to release the locking clip that sits in the middle of the visor just here, but it always came away without too much difficulty. A lot of the time I actually just lifted the whole chin bar if I wanted to let some air in while I was stopped at traffic lights, because it's just as easy to lift the whole chin bar as lift the visor and it lets in more air. The visor, which for visor spotters is an HJ37, is very easy to remove and refit and it's also protected by a top grade Pinlock 120 anti-mist insert. And if you need to adjust the tension on the mounting pins for the Pinlock, then it's easy to do that thanks to the external screws that let you rotate those pins without pushing them out of the visor and pushing them back in again. I found peripheral vision from that visor to be excellent as well. Behind the main visor is a sun visor, which I also found to be excellent. It's got good depth of drop in its standard trim, but if you want more, you can use a switch behind this cover on the side of the helmet to give you even more drop. Sliding the switch that's behind that cover up one stage gives a bit more drop, and then putting it up to the top allows the most amount of coverage from that sun visor. And as it drops, the sun visor slides away from your face as well, which is really good news if you were at the front of the queue when the noses were being handed out. The sun visor is also anti-fog coated, which I found really handy when it's damp, the sun's low, and I still fancied seeing where I was going. Okay, so let's move to the inside. The lining is fully removable. It's got a real premium feel as well, and the tops of the cheek pads are also thinner to accommodate spectacle arms. Overall, the inside of this helmet feels like a really top line interior. The neck roll has an additional section to give a closer fit around the neck, which is there to help keep the ride quieter than it would otherwise be. I wore this helmet on two different bikes. I did a few hundred miles on a Suzuki GSX-S 1000 GT, and then about another 1900 miles on a new Suzuki V-Strom 800 DE. I don't go into too much detail about noise in reviews because there are so many variables that my experience could well be way different to yours, but I found no problems at all riding either of those two bikes in this helmet while wearing a pair of Auratech earplugs. There are recesses inside the helmet for intercom speakers, which I'll get onto a bit more in a minute, and the strap fastener is a micrometric buckle, as you'll find on virtually every flip front helmet that's ever been made. The slider for it is made from stainless steel, which gives a reassuring feel of quality, and the housing just here has even been painted in metal flake red to try and boost the quality of finish even more. Okay, let's talk about intercoms then. This is the third HJC helmet I've reviewed that's prepared for their second generation of intercoms. You can buy either a relatively simple Bluetooth unit, the HJC 21B, or a more sophisticated mesh communicator, the HJC 50B. Both of them are made for HJC by Senna. The battery and engine for those units goes into a chamber at the back of the neck roll, and then either one or two control modules attach in place of the cover or the covers on the sides of the helmet. I tested the more expensive 50B unit during my time with this lid and found it to work very well with the helmet and it also had a very minimal effect on weight, noise and comfort. It was also very, very easy to fit in the first place. Now we're working on a review of the intercom in its own right and we'll add a link in the description for this video once we've published that. In summary though, if you're happy to add the price of an intercom and if you're happy with Senna technology, then this combination, the helmet and the 50B works very, very well. The problem though kicks in if you've already got a universal intercom that you'd like to transfer to this helmet or if you prefer to use a brand other than Senna for your tech. You can fit something else to this helmet and our shop teams have fitted generic intercoms to these helmets for customers in our stores, but the mounting position will be less than ideal as the normal fixing positions are kind of blocked off by the mounts for the HJC intercom. It's just something to bear in mind. Okay, let's move on to sizing and approvals. The R for 91 comes in sizes from extra small up to double extra large. There are four shell sizes to cover that range, which helps keep the external size of the helmet more in proportion with your head. The smallest shell is used for helmet sizes extra small and small. Medium has its own shell, so does large. And then helmet sizes XL and 2XL share the biggest shell. The helmet is approved, as I said earlier, to the latest ECE 2206 standard for the road. There's no rating yet under the UK government's SHARP testing program as we record this, but we'll add it to the description for this video if and when one is revealed. Right then, it's time to sum up. I've been lucky enough to review pretty much all of the best flip front helmets on the market, and I'd say this is right up there with them. About the only real criticism I have is of the way the intercom integration blocks out other types of unit, which I know will put off some riders. The quality of the helmet is excellent. The shape suited my head, which is a round shape, 
and I found this comfortable for long periods in the saddle. The ventilation, as I think I probably already said, is absolutely top notch and the way the chin bar lifts into a more compact position is first class as well. After more than 2000 miles, this helmet also still looks and feels like it's brand new. And if a few hundred quid for the official intercom is okay for you, then those two, the helmet and the intercom work very, very well together. All I've got to do now is go off and update our video about the five best flip front helmets as this R for 91 definitely deserves a place in that. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the HJC R for 91 helmet, but if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.